Welcome to Science at FMNH, a podcast and video series that explores the behind the scenes science, collections, and research at Chicago's Field Museum. We continue our discussion with Bill Stanley to discover the importance of museum collections in understanding changing mammal populations in Tanzania. My name is Bill Stanley. I'm the collection manager in the Division of Mammals. Less than 1% of what's in the Field Museum is actually on display. That means there's 99 point something more mummies, more mammals, more dinosaurs behind the scenes. And my job is to take care of the collection of mammals here at the Field Museum of Natural History. While my main focus uh, on a yearly basis is to take care of that collection, I do have a personal research agenda. I work in East Africa, specifically in Tanzania, on small mammals, shrews, bats, rodents, on mountaintops in different areas of Tanzania. So the country of Tanzania is in East Africa, it's uh, just below the equator, and there are a variety of different habitats and ecosystems that are in the country. There are coastal forests, there are coral reefs, there are alpine plateaus, uh, there are dry savannas and grasslands like in the Serengeti, but scattered across the country are isolated mountains that have rainforests on top of those mountains. And my focus has been to work on the small mammals on each and every one of those mountains to try and figure out what mammals are living on each mountain and how they got there in the first place. The main focus of my work are mammals, but specifically within that group, shrews, which are very primitive placental mammals, bats, and rodents. And specifically, these are shrews and bats and rodents that live in the montane rainforests of these different mountains, which will be different for the most part than the shrews and the bats and the rodents that live in the Serengeti, for example. On each and every one of these mountains is an isolated ecosystem. Often we refer to these mountain systems as islands. And the sea in that scenario is the dry, lowland habitat. And the animals that live on these individual mountains and in these rainforests of these individual mountains cannot travel from one mountain to the other because they're, they're, they can't cross this dry habitat down below. So each of these mountains, and this is an important part of, of our research, each of these mountains are isolated from one another and there's no genetic exchange between these mountains. In order to document what different types of species are occurring on these mountains, we need to collect specimens. We actually go into the forests and live for two months at a time eating rice and beans to trap these rats. And we use the same types of traps that you might uh, buy in a hardware store. And we collect these rodents. And the data that we collect from each of these include uh, various measurements, total length, tail length, hind foot. Uh, we want to be able to know if the tail is longer than the head and body. We want to know if the claws are substantially longer in one species than, than they are in another. And all this information is written down in the back of these tags that go with these specimens. The other data that's very important for us to collect is exactly where we're catching these animals and the habitat characteristics for those animals. People often ask me, so why do you have all these specimens? You know, why do you need another squirrel? Why do you need to collect uh, more rats? The answer to that is that there is constant change. There's constant change over time. And there's constant change from geographic location to geographic location. What museums like this one represent is a library of data that we can mine to figure out what sort of changes those have been. So that there are often hypotheses that, come to, that spring to mind just by moving through the collection. The information that's being gleaned from these specimens and from the over 200,000 specimens we have here is vitally important for many of the ills that plague society. 